So uh, that's the first one. Second one is cultivate a love relationship with Jesus. That is that sounds almost like a little trite cliche that you would say in a children's service or something. That's one of the most important things you can ever deal with. Do you really know Christ? Do you really love Him? And do you really know that He loves you? And before you say, oh yeah, oh yeah, do you? This is a growing process. It really is. You know, I used to think I was really good at relationships. I mean, that's what I do. I go around the country and teach on relationships. I tell folks, it's not because I'm so good at it. It's just that I'm quite a student of it. And there's reasons why I'm a student of it, okay? And, uh, but one reason is it's just the most important thing there is. The two great commandments are relational. God and people. And you're never going to have the sense of worth and value that you should have until you know that God loves you. And you don't know it just in your brain. You know it. At your worst moment, God loves you as much as he will ever love you. There is nothing you can do no matter how you're living right now, there's nothing you can do to make God love you any more than He does right now. Now, I like the phrase that you probably all heard, God loves you just as you are, but He loves you too much to leave you like you are. And, but He loves you just like you are. And what happens, we're afraid to let God close to us because God can't see that in me. God won't accept me because of this, this, or this. Try it. Try it. Let him see you at your worst. He's going to still love you. In Healing for Damaged Emotions by David Siemens, that's what he says. But don't put this super you before God. Take the real you to God. You never develop a close, intimate, loving relationship until you become vulnerable to someone else. Whether it's another human being or God, it's fact. When you open up your heart and give your heart to somebody, then and only then can you start experiencing love. And opening our hearts for some of us, is not as easy as it is for others. It's not. Some of us are very guarded, very protective, because if you open up your heart and become vulnerable, what's going to happen? Past experience usually says something bad when you're really guarded. Something bad. Somebody's going to hurt you. <laughs> if you love, you will get hurt. But I'm going to tell you, students, you may have tendencies to say, I'm going to get guarded. I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to bury this part of mine so it never gets hurt. I'm going to, you know, put it in, as C.S. Lewis said, put it in this casket and bury it in the ground to where it won't be hurt. And he says, it won't be hurt. It'll become unbreakable. But neither can you experience the greatest thing in life. And that's love with God and love with people. It's worth the risk. It is a risk. But even if you get hurt, don't quit loving. Especially don't quit loving God. Don't stop accepting His love. So many people cannot experience God because you can't accept that He loves you. And I'm not uh, speaking condescendingly to you. I, I know from experience. It can be hard. God loves you even if you're not grasping it. I love that scripture that we love him because he first loved us. That's why I can love him. That's why I can open up myself. That's why I can become vulnerable to him. That's why I can give him my heart. That's why I can risk everything in loving him. Because he first loves me. And I like to define love as the unselfish and sacrificial commitment to the good of another. John 3.16. Do you think that's unselfish and sacrificial commitment to the good of all of us? 
Philippians chapter 2, Jesus stepped out of heaven, took the cross to die, identified with us, went to the cross in a miserable death for us, gave up all that he had for you and me. Do you think that's an unselfish and sacrificial commitment to our good? You better believe it. That's why he says if he gave us his own son, why will he not freely give us all things? Why can't we trust him? All right, I'm preaching instead of going through this. Realize that no one but God will ever be totally affirming. Your best friend, your family members that you love and you dearly want them to always pat you on the back and always recognize what you need at the moment, not going to do it. Some are going to be better than others. I tell people lots of times, especially if they're going through a tough time, I tell them, look, I want to help you, but sometimes I am so dumb, and I don't know how to help you. Just clue me in. Just tell me. If I'm not smart enough to get it, if I'm not discerning enough to know what you need at the time, just tell me. Hey, I could use a little encouragement right now. Take me out and buy me a cup of Starbucks coffee. Oh, don't do that too often. That stuff's expensive. But anyway, tell me. And I hope you learn that lesson. If you need somebody, tell them. I don't mean be a leech. <laughs> do that just so you can get your Starbucks. But, uh, but uh, you know, if you need some help, if you have some trusted people in your life, go to them. And uh, also do the same for them. But no one's ever totally affirmed. Everybody's going to disappoint you at some time in some manner. Okay? Are you okay with that? I hope so, because if you're not, you're believing one of Albert Ellis's irrational statements that we talked about. Everybody's always got to be good to me and love me at all times. Nice thought. Really is a nice thought. It's a fairy tale. <laughs> it's not reality. All right? But look at the long term with people. People that I'm the closest to, I've probably had the most disagreements with. But we have proven our love and our friendship, and it's it's the commitment is there. We don't have to always do it right. Because I know at the end of the day, that person's going to be my friend, and I'm going to be theirs. 